Hello everybody. I am going to begin demonstrating the individual projects for the Snap Circuits Kit, Snap Circuits Light. We're going to start with project one, which is called Color Light. I am going to explain to you the components that are included and what happens during each project and why it occurs. Be aware that many of these projects in this kit have flashing lights. And if you have epilepsy or another medical condition that makes you sensitive to rapidly changing or unsynced flashing lights, please do not watch any of these projects. I cannot be responsible for any medical conditions, emergencies, or damages that may occur from your decision to watch. So, with that said, let's learn about light. Project one is called color light. For this project, we have the slide switch, the R1 resistor, and the color LED, along with the two battery holders, each having two AA batteries. We're gonna turn on the slide switch and let's see what happens. The color LED changes colors and flashes. Now it's pretty bright, but I can put one of the attachments on. In this case, I'm gonna put the monument over, the tower over, and I'm going to actually turn off this light. And now you can see the changing colors much easier. It's also not as glary. What colors do you see? There, it seems like all possible colors, all the basic colors at least, are seen. And it's incredible how that LED works. That's because there are actually three separate LEDs inside of it. They are red, blue, and green. There is a micro circuit that controls them, so that's why this component appears to change colors. Now the resistor here is intended to limit current through the LED. Now the LEDs themselves in these uh, kits have built-in resistors to limit current, but for, as a precaution, I think, one of the main resistors is included as well, otherwise current might damage the LED. Project two is white light. I'm using the same circuit, but I replace the color LED with the white LED. Let's turn on the slide switch. A bright white light comes on. The white LED, as you can probably tell, is incredibly bright. And this type of LED might be used in a lot of house lights or flashlights because of their light output. I'm going to turn off the main light and you can see how much of an area the white LED lights up. So this would make a good flashlight. In addition, these LEDs might be used in replacement bulbs for house lamps because although they are a bit more expensive than CFL or incandescent bulbs, they are a lot more energy efficient and will lead to incredible energy savings in the long run. I am going to put this tower attachment on and you have a neat display. Project three is called red light. This project uses the same circuit as the previous two projects, but we re inserted the red LED. 
Let's turn on the slide switch. The red LED comes on. I am going to turn off this light and let's see how bright it really is. Compared to the white LED, it's not really bright at all. And you could only see right in front of you with it. This type of LED is typically used as an indicator light in many electronic devices like a radio, television, clock, stove or oven, or computer. Although this type of LED is not bright, it's very inexpensive and compact. So it, it's the excellent type of light source to use as an indicator in devices. Project four is light show. This project includes all LEDs including the three main ones, plus that on the color organ. I put the fiber optic tree attachment on the organ this time, and I am going to turn on the slide switch. The LEDs blink, and the color LED plus that on the color organ change color. LED stands for light emitting diode and an LED converts electrical energy into light. The color of the LED depends on the characteristics of the materials that are used in them. LEDs are a lot more energy efficient, as I said in at least one of my previous videos, than incandescent light bulbs or even CFL bulbs. And that's why they're becoming more common. Project five is called Voice Light Show. This project is very interesting and it includes the color organ and microphone. What I am going to do is speak into the microphone and I'm going to actually take the fiber optic tree attachment off but please watch the LED closely. Here we go. Hello? How are you? Is anybody there? I guess not. Now you notice that the LED changed colors as I spoke. In this project, the microphone is pretty sensitive, so even from this distance, the LED would change colors. That's why when I was talking, I had to turn the circuit off or else the LED would change colors. But now it's on again. And as I speak right now, it changes. I will tell you about the individual colors in the next project. But in this one, five, the microphone is converting my voice into an electrical signal, which will control an electronic counter within the color organ, which in turn controls the color of a red, green, and blue LED. The colors will mix to make secondary colors. Project six is an interesting one. It's called Play the Color Organ. For this project, I am going to show you the different colors that the LED on the color organ can produce. And I'm going to play it by using my fingers. There are four different points we're going to use. Here's point X, which is in the middle of the three snap wire. Then there's point R, point G, and point B. I'm going to put my ring finger on the, in the middle of the three snap wire. And then I'm going to start off by putting my index finger on one of each points. Let's see what happens. The LED is red. Now I'm going to move to G. The LED is green. And then I'm going to do B. You get blue. Now there are different combinations. Now as I told you before, 
the LED and the color organ is actually three LEDs combined together. One of them is red, one is green, and the third is blue. Now we're going to combine red and green first. So I'm going to put my fingers between the red and green points. Now you get yellow, you get like a yellowish color. Now, now, green and blue, which I'm doing now, will make cyan, which is kind of like a light blue color. And red and blue will make purple. Finally, all touching all points on the LED on the color organ. This is tricky to do one-handed while holding the camera and it may look yellowish but in reality a white the color white is being produced when you combine all of the three colors you get white take away any of your fingers and the color changes now sometimes if your fingers are moist enough like if you were sweating or if they're warm you might be able to get a current to like the LED, but sometimes you may have to wet your fingers, even if it means licking them or putting them in your mouth. As disgusting as it sounds, that's the most convenient way. Project seven is flying saucer. This project looks simple, but it has an, a very interesting principle. We have to insert the motor with the positive side facing away from the batteries and we will place the fan on. We have to hold down the press switch, make the motor spin, and now, sometimes if you release it, the fan will fly right off the motor, acting like a flying saucer. Now, I don't think I have very strong batteries, so I would need to, I may need to hit the press switch several times, and yep, it flew off. I'm going to try it one more time. Sometimes hitting the button several times and re uh, repeatingly will help. Now, how does the uh, fan fly off? Well, the direction you place the motor causes it to spin in a counterclockwise direction, which will force air down. When the motor is spinning, the it locks the fan onto it but when you release the switch it un releases the fan and if it is going fast enough the fan will fly off that's why it usually only works when you release the press switch it's possible that if the motor was spinning incredibly fast it would fly off while it is still spinning but Usually you have to release the switch. This fan glows in the dark. Allow it to absorb sunlight for a time before you view it in the dark. But be careful not to let it get too hot or else it would melt. Now if the motor is not spinning fast enough, then the fan cannot be released because the downward thrust is not sufficiently strong to release the fan and you may need to replace your batteries or use an AC adapter that you can buy separately for your snap circuits to get the fan going. Project 8 is Super Flying Saucer. This project is, has a similar principle to the previous one but I'm using both sets of batteries for the motor. Now, it is recommended that you wear eye protection for this circuit because of the fan. But now, when I hold down the press switch, the fan actually flies off the motor before I let go of it. It is traveling much faster since it has greater power. Now, you want to let other people in the area know about this so that they can be on the lookout for the fan because getting hit by it can, may result in injury. There it goes again. 
the fan pretty much goes up to the ceiling, or at least close to there. Went maybe about three or four feet up that time. But if you lose the fan, you can order replacement ones at snapcircuits.net. Also, a more obvious warning is not to look directly at the motor or fan blade when it's rotating.